Hello dear family, this is Cece from Reigniting Women for Christ and I hope you had a blessed Sabbath. Um, I certainly did um, by God's grace and I do hope that um, some of you, if not all of you, are tuning in to a great tribute to Black History Month um, and um, every Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, from the Israel of God in Chicago, um, today was part three. So, so far we've done part one, part two, today was part three. It's a five-part series on the black history found in the Bible. So, I spent my Sabbath in prayer and worship and meditation, reflection, um, also participating and listening in in that particular um, series. And I heard my niece also that was um, in D.C., she tuned in. So um, praise God, that's great news, and I'm proud of you, my little one. And so this reflection is reflection number nine, and it's titled, Sister in Christ, Be of Good Cheer, and Wait on the Lord. So, um, if you could pull your Bible out, we begin with an opening, and um, we begin with Psalm 57, verses 1 and 2. It says, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will take my refuge until these calamities have passed by. Verse 2. I will cry out to you, God Most High, to God who performs all things for me. Amen. So as I stated, I hope you had a blessed Sabbath. And this reflection number nine um, really emanates from reflection number eight. If you did not have time to listen to it, it was very brief, but it's titled, Make Your Mountains Your Ministry. And I've alluded to in that audio that I've done exactly that. Based on my personal pain and some joy, I was able to begin this audio reflection, understanding the urgency of um, living in the last days and sounding the alarm. Um, some may say as the watchman, but as a watchwoman, alerting my sisters in Christ, for I know... Um, in this day and age, they are responsible primarily um, for their families, um, for the spirits and souls of their little ones. And it's very important that when they speak, family members listen mm -hmm. and at least an opportunity where we can um, um, open up, be transparent and share the word of God. And so I took my mountains on some may say molehills, and thus I was able to start this audio ministry for the, for the main purpose of sharing with you my experiences as a lukewarm Christian and sharing with you my faith walk and hoping that you would share and do likewise. So often during times of turbulence and uncertainty, whether it's internal or external, we are called to wait on the Lord. According to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8, Therefore wait ye upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. And the prey is spelled P-R-E-Y. Certainly you could read the rest of the verse that really explicates that God will gather the nations to pour upon his indignation and um, based on what was done. So God is on your side, and but he asked that we wait upon him so that he can exercise his rightful judgment and do not choose to do so to anyone who you may deem might have wronged you um, in any way. James 5, 7 says, Call us to be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Romans 12.12 12 says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. 
and that instant is almost like continuing instant, meaning without ceasing, um, continuously in prayer. So I know, sisters, whether mountains or molehills, as I stated in reflection number eight, waiting and being patient is not a passive process, but an active, an active term. Do you agree? So let's explore this further. So it's a choice. Um, th there goes to the algorithm that we discussed a few reflections prior in terms of making decisions. And so the first question you would ask is, wait on the Lord or handle it on your own? So let's explore this. Let's just say you have an issue that's going on, mountain or molehill, regardless of what. I believe, sisters, if you say it's a mountain, it's a mountain. But understand from my reflection number eight, um, God can move mountains. But the question is, can you wait? Can you pray? Can you be ins insistently praying? And pray without ceasing um, and wait. Wait for the Lord, wait for his move, wait for his action. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. And um, if you choose to actively wait, how do you accomplish this? How? What is your process in waiting on the Lord? Do you have time that you gave God? Um, with full transparency, I can say I did, right? Um, I recall to this day the age where I made a decision to return to the world and walk the broad path. A few reflections ago, we spoke about a narrow path that can be lonely and then a broad path that can lead to your surmise, demise. Um, my apologies, demise. So because I did not wait and was not patient enough, figured I knew best, I turned away from the narrow path which I was walking, my faith walk, and became more of a lukewarm Christian, meaning I did the kind of lip service, you know, when the church on Sunday still, um, I still prayed, but when it came to following the rules of the Bible, keeping the Sabbath, um, not fornicating, um, um, living a life of the world once in a while, we'd go out with friends, um, etc. Um, I left the narrow path and I continued down the broad, broad path. And that made me a lukewarm Christian. And even more dangerous is that because I knew better, because I was walking that narrow path, um, and I chose, I elected to not wait and, and go down the broad path. That's even a more dangerous thing that we can do, especially as we're drawing closer to the end time. So I reflected on this area of a lukewarm Christian in a couple of my reflections. And in my experience, things were okay. You know, some of you were like, well, I wish I could have okay. And maybe some of you, okay is good compared to the challenges that you're currently facing, right? So I can't really say I had any major issues within the time when I was a lukewarm Christian. And aside from the death of my father, the passing of my dad, may he rest in peace, um, there were ups and downs at work, but you know, nothing too big of a deal. No layoffs. I had a lot of managers come and go within my organization. My level, middle level management, senior management levels came and went. Um, I was fre frequently recruited by different cabinet members and I opted to stay my course. And I was just, you know, okay. I was just walking um, a safe path. Um, and um, then... On my road to Damascus, I had a change of heart again, by God's grace. Um, but what I wanted to really impress upon even more is that okay is not okay because you have called us to greatness. Um, he called us to head the Gentile nations. Um, and instead, the Gentile nations drew us away, drew us away from, yeah. So, um, that's an example of my choosing not to wait. 
And conversely, I would like to share with you an example of when I chose to wait. I might have shared with you earlier in a couple of my reflections that I'm currently working on a research project and that research project is under um, review. Um, the latter part of last year I encountered some hurdles and rather than become irate or surrender, I decided that I was going to wait on the Lord this time around. And that's indeed what I did. While I'm still waiting, it's drawing closer for the approval process, but I'm still waiting. And this is going on seven months, six or seven months. And um, I was sharing with my sister and a couple friends that um, the timeline that I set up for myself, which I was very pleased with, um, that went out the window. And so that timeline is no longer. However, um, what I have, what I've been called to do during this time, I'm very grateful for um, the mountain that presented itself. And in turn, I was able to turn that mountain into my own ministry. And what I think is in a process of saving or assisting individuals in saving their souls. Um, the way I have returned to the narrow path, I've made it my mission and I'm passionate about reaching out to other sisters and giving them a heads up, um, share with them my story, um, even a reflection if it's helpful, um, and just advising them to conduct a deep dive on their own. And so in my waiting, um, what you do, including going to the Bible, consuming the Word, um, keeping the Sabbath, getting revelation and wisdom and understanding, knowledge and understanding, um, I realize is the best gift ever. And if I could share with you one thing that I would have done differently this time versus a few years ago is that I should have waited and be patient. And though I cannot get back those years, and it's important to understand that when we do sin, um, God is not punishing us once we remove remove ourselves from the sin, but there's still a price that has to be paid for what we were doing, whatever that might be. So in my in on my journey, um, surrounding myself with family and friends, and men and women of God um, is, is a choice and doing so is one of the best decisions I can have overall. As he continued to prune and work through me, um, I continue to consume more of his words. Um, I have many moments where there is um, revelation, um, which I'm very grateful for and which I continue to share and share with other sisters in Christ and hoping that their journey is um, a powerful journey with the understanding, the importance of waiting and having patience. Now, one, one of my favorite Psalms is a bit long that I want to share with you in this audio, since my other audios were a bit shorter, is Psalm 37. And some of the main things that come out of Psalm 37 really speaks and lends to um, the challenges and the tribulations that we have encountered in our life, both personally and professionally, call it mountains and molehills. But in the Bible, it's referred to as evildoers and workers of iniquity. And it's important to that he recommends and he charges with um, putting some action. So while we wait, there's some action to be done, like trusting, that's an action. Um, and, and, and reading and resting. Those are all action words and ceasing. Um, some action words that I want to share with you. So if hopefully your Bible is still out, we want to explore Psalm 37. And before I do this, I also want to give homage to my mom. Um, mom, one of my role models, my mother, um, she was responsible for four young sisters in Christ and she did it extremely well. And I do have memories of days where not only she spent quality time with us 
and she made her own clothes and we were always well dressed and put together but having said that aside from the exterior uh, many a nights we spend in prayer in worship reading the bible um, reading the psalms reading genesis and exodus and her, her taking us to bible um, bible classes so even though we were raised in um, kind of a pagan faith, um, unbeknownst to us and unbeknownst to her and unbeknownst to her parents, as many as we have done, um, we still, the Bible was still a very important part of our world. And that's what we have seen. So as a result of those many nights of reading and praying together, Many of the verses I remember and many of the Psalms I remember and Psalm 37 is one of them. I find it very powerful, especially when dealing with many controversies in our lives. So we have Psalm 37. I'll begin. Do not fret one action because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Envious is an action. Okay, so do not be envious. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Another two actions. Delight yourself also in the Lord. Another action. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Another action. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Another action. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, another action, and wait patiently for him, another action. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. How many of times we've had and looked at the wicked and the evil and say, how do you do this and get away with that? And sometimes we may have just for a nanosecond, if you've been honest, and saying, wonder, how do they get away with it, Right. So just think about that. He says, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Verse 8, cease from anger, another action, and forsake wrath, another action. Do not fret, it only causes harm. Understand? For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just, and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who have upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Whoa. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. Remember that, sisters. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and the inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. For the wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. In smoke they shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall not for those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Remember that. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice, and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. 
the wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are, wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I've seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace. One of my favorite lines. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Beautiful. The word of the Lord. So my dear sisters, the importance of waiting and being patient, wait on the Lord um, is very important. Um, Blesses that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Psalm 42 verse 4. The Lord, according to scripture, says, I delight to do your will. Oh my God, and your law is within my heart. So while being patient and waiting, it's important that we know the word, that we know his commandments, and he will delight when we do his will. And the way we can do so is by reading the word of God, consuming the word of God. You have heard me in the past state that I have a voracious appetite for the Word of God. And you should consume the Word of God daily, day and night. I promise you, with asking the God to minister to you and giving you the wisdom and revelation, this too will be disclosed to you. In every decision that you need to make, every al- algorithm, every decision tree that you have, you put it to the Lord and He will, He will, He will respond. He will give you the answers to all of your questions, all of your heart's desires. He's there waiting for you to open the door, allow him to enter, and keep the commandments, and gain knowledge of what he wants from us as we prepare for his second coming. Psalm 44 says, We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days in the days of old. How you drove out the nations with your hand, but them you planted, you afflicted the peoples and cast them out. Verse 4 says, You are my king, O God, command victories for Jacob. Through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. And it's by that type of faith is where we will have the patience. And um, if we wait and have the patience, we will have the victory. So I will end this reflection of the importance of waiting and being patient with Psalm 55. Notice we spend majority of our time in the Psalms. Um, it says, Psalm 55, verse 1, Give ear to my prayer, God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, 
I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide your tongues, who have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on wheels. Day and night they go around it on its walls. Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in its midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its streets. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I can bear it, nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide from him. But it was you, a man my equal, my companion, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throne. Verse 17 says, Evening and morning at noon I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Yes, he will, my sisters. He will redeem your soul. He will, God will hear and afflict them. God will make your enemies your footstool, his footstool. And he will fight your battles. I continue to see many examples of this in my life. And I will conclude with one example I've had. I got news this week that an issue, a mountain that I've had, those who know me personally knows the mountain, going on go to seven to ten years. Um, I think I spoke about it briefly in my last reflection that my mountain that was very close up as a close up mountain um, will no longer be in terms of being a close up mountain and information was shared to me um, just this week and what I've done was waited patiently for the Lord so he can make his move Um, and as a result the majority of times I have to say I was able to hold my own, be patient, be respectful um, in the workplace and do what needed to be done, respond in kind and and really achieve and do what I needed to get done. Because while I wanted to get back and react and take vengeance on that person, I knew the bigger reward um, that I would receive if I were told to have waited and waited patiently and waited in grace. And in doing so, um, the reward materialized. So I encourage you, sisters, that we do wait on the Lord. And again, be of good good courage. Um, Do not hear, do not fear. Um, God will not leave you nor forsake you. Um, I pray that you have a blessed weekend. I'm off to work tomorrow. And a blessed week. And I so look forward to another Sabbath next week. So stay blessed. If you have any questions, you could hit me up on Instagram. Or you can at Reignite Women for Christ. Or you can send me an email at rwfc2 at yahoo.com. Shalom.